Hello, my friend, and welcome to Vintage Story. I'm going to be getting started in Vintage Story today. It's a pretty cool game that I just got wind of, thanks to Tyron, the developer, sending me a key to check it out. So far, the game, uh, from what people tell me, is a lot like Terra Firma Craft from Minecraft, which was a mod that kind of brought you through, like, the different ages and very, um... Oh, I don't know how you'd call it. Very rudimentary type uh, crafting systems and stuff. And you start out with basically nothing as you do in Minecraft. But it's not easy to just start mining things. Like, you could take loose flint from the ground and things like this. But, and you can also break leaves. But things like rock aren't easily mineable. So, getting into some of this stuff is a little bit different. You can hover over blocks and see. This is slate rock and requires... A tool tier 2, copper to break. And that, my friends, is much, much, much more than meets the eye. So, the cool thing that I got from this game is it's kind of like Tug, where you can kind of do uh, some crafting in its very simple form by what they call napping. And you can take things like two pieces of flint and make knife blades, for instance. And what you'll get here is a little bit of a cutout. You have to take away everything that doesn't look like a knife blade. <laughs> My dad used to tell me this is how to carve and whittle. If you want to whittle something or carve something, you just got to cut away everything that doesn't look like what you're trying to make. And it, 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 it's exactly true like that. I'm here to tell you that was right. So after we get all of this out of the way, we just get it in our inventory and it actually made two of them just like we cut out there. So now we have to find something to make with the knife blade, and that's a knife, and we're going to get that from sticks. Now, there's a couple ways to get sticks. You can just find them out in the open, or you can actually chop bushes, and I'm going to do that. You could do that with your hands, or with the stick, or with whatever's in your hand, and as you can see, we just picked up a little stick here. So we're going to open up our crafting window, we're going to throw a stick in there, and we're going to put a knife blade on top, and boom, knife blade. Pretty simple, right? So, knife blade uh, is now a flint knife and can be used to harvest things. So, we can start harvesting up these reeds or these cattails. And you can see that it's left a little bit of a stalk. Now, you can break these without it, for instance. And if you do that, you're, you're going to get the cattail still, but... Or you might not get the cattail, actually. And you'll actually destroy the plant and it won't go back, which is... It's useful if it's in your way, right? But for the most part, you're going to want to gather up some of these cattails so that you can expand your inventory a little bit. I'll show you how to do that in just a moment after I harvest a few more. And it looks like my knife just broke, but I happen to get quite a bit of the cattails before I finished up. And I can always just make another knife blade with a stick, which we're going to do right now. Well, not a knife blade, but a knife. Anyway, I've got another knife, but I think I have enough of these cattails now. Now, what you could do with the cattails are a variety of different things. I can go all around like this to make myself a bit of a basket if I layer it correctly. And this basket is a stationary basket that you can place, kind of like a chest. We're not going to do that quite now, though. What we're going to do is this instead. And this is a hand basket, and it's going to give us item slots. So if we put that in here, we're going to get extra inventory space. That's exactly what we need, believe it or not. Right now, we we're very, very limited on inventory space, and this is going to be very, very good. So we could use a few more cattails uh, when we decide to actually settle down, but we really need to find food. The green meter on the bottom right corner of the screen is my food. And basically, it's going to deplete as I continue to do stuff. And when it gets all the way low, naturally, I'm going to start taking damage from hunger. So I don't want that to happen. And one of the easiest renewable food sources that you can get are berries. So when we look around at some of these bushes here and there, you're going to see that they're berry bushes that you can use to harvest. You can actually pick up the berry bushes, kind of like you can in some versions of modded Minecraft. And uh, once you get the berry bush, you can place it somewhere else. But now we have a few berries to eat. And when we eat the cranberries, it's going to refill our hunger. These will actually refill health as well. Not all food types do the same things. But from what I've seen, 
uh, the berry bushes do. And there's some flower bearing, flowering berry bushes here, but we're going to pick them up anyway, so that wherever we decide to stay, we'll actually get a little bit of um, kind of a, a food storage, so to speak, or a renewable version of sources that we can continue to harvest as we get hungry and as we go. There's also going to be clay that we need here. You could dig this up with a shovel relatively easy, and I don't have a whole lot of flint on me, so I probably need to find some more flint in order to get clay, and that way uh, we'll have that for a little bit later too. Clay is not super necessary for what we need now, but it's going to be very necessary to get into some of the progression. In fact, uh, it's it, we're, we're going to need it for copper tools, basically. So that's still only one flint, and look at this. Lo and behold, native copper bits. We're going to need some of those too, and this is uh, actually a really, really good supply of them here. Now, we'll be able to prospect a little bit later and get... Um, when we do have copper tools online, we'll be able to get much more of that stuff in a location like this. And it looks like it's starting to get foggy and possibly a little bit dark. Now, I can pull out my torch and it'll help me see a little bit. I can actually place my torch too. But to get a little bit more going, that we're going to need some wood and a hatchet. And I could see that... There are not really many trees around this area. I'm probably going to have to travel a little bit for that. But let me grab a stick or two. And I'm probably going to just end up moving out here until I find some more flint and a tree to chop down. It looks like there's a tree here in the distance I'll be able to harvest. And I just so happen to have enough of uh, flint now to make a little axe so let's go ahead and stoop down here and I'm going to pick up the flint axe head here and chop away all the bits that are not <laughs> that are highlighted in orange really and as soon as I do that I'll have a, an axe head that I can connect to a stick and chop down the tree with perfect let's go ahead and take the stick now and the axe head that I just got and put that right in my hot bar and we can start crafting or we can start chopping down the tree so to say and get some some wood now this does take a little bit of time and it is getting a little bit dark I'm gonna have to make sure that the gamma is bright enough for you guys to see alrighty so we've got all of our wood set up from that now we can possibly make some firewood and get a little fire going we really don't have anything to cook right now, but we can make some extra torches if need be. But this area is not quite wooded enough for me. There are some trees here and there, but I need much, much more than this. And actually, I see some movement out there. I don't have a spear yet, but that's probably something I can put together, right? So let's see here. Flint spearhead, okay? Alrighty, there's my flint spearhead. And with that in hand, wherever it went, with that in hand, I now have a flint spear. Beautiful. Uh, let's go ahead and put that here. And whatever this thing is, I can probably take it down for a little bit of materials. Let's go ahead and harvest this up too. <gasps> there it is. All right, we're gonna have to. We're gonna. We're gonna have to. Um, let, me, let me put my torch down right here so we could actually see the fight. How about this? Oh my god. I got it back. He... Oh. Oh my god, this guy's strong. Got him. Hoof. Look at my health. <laughs> okay, let's, let's eat some cranberries before we die. Holy crap. Yeah, we're going to need a lot more berries. Than that what is this nuggets of native copper I need berries man berries I tell you okay so we can skin this guy if we shift and right click we could harvest oh baby we got red meat raw raw hide raw hide and lumps of fat okay and it just crumbled well I tell you what that was a hell of a fight now 
We're gonna get actual aggressive creatures sooner or later. There are monsters that start spawning in the game uh, when you get far enough in, uh, which is a few nights in. I think you have like three nights or so before it gets really, really rough. <laughs> so we have a few days to prepare, and I'm starting to see some forest here. So let's let's travel there, huh? See, that says only three days left before monsters begin to appear. <laughs> So what we could do is that we can actually pass some of this uh, this nighttime right here by sleeping. Uh, we just need to make a little bit of a bed, and I believe to make a bed here. Tell you what, let's check out the recipes. You can hit H, and I can see here that let's see, bed, wooden bed, a hay bed. A hay bed is made from hay grass, and that is made from dry grass in this formation. Okay. That's easy enough, so let's just go ahead and grab some dry grass. We're gonna need some of this too in order to make a fire here. All right, we should have enough now. Let's go ahead and set it up. One, two, three, okay. And boom, hay bed, okay. Hay bed goes down, right click and right click to sleep. And there goes the moon. And up comes the sun. Do -do -do -do. <laughs> so the uh, <laughs> this actually passes, I believe, six hours of time, which not necessarily gets you through the entire night, but it does bring you a good bit through what you need. So there are a few trees here. I would naturally like much bigger trees, and I'm starting to see some of those in the distance, I think. That may just be mountain peaks here. I'm also wanting to kind of find a spot to settle down. Right now we seem to be in some sort of a swamp biome and as comfortable as I am with that, it would take forever. Ooh, those are wolves. We're not gonna fight those. We can't, well, I don't think we could take a hit right now, actually. I don't think we could take a hit of anything. We're just gonna have to go until we see uh, some, some real trees. And lo and behold, there seems to be a hut here um, hmm, could this be a house for us, maybe? <laughs> so we wouldn't have to build it on our own? Look at this, it's like a little tree house. Izel? <laughs> what? Uh, apparently he's a, he's a clothing merchant. Delivery of new goods in nine days. He sells all sorts of stuff. What can you... You can sell, oh, I could sell all of my clothes. Oh, or I could sell flax twine. Gears look like the form of currency that he goes by. I don't think we have any gears. Oh, there's some gears here. Can, oh, cannot play, oh. Yeah, you can't do anything right there. I can't, ex I can't, <laughs> I can't access that. Okay, we can't steal from this guy apparently. But that's kind of cool that there's a trader here. That is really, really cool, in fact. See, when I was telling you you could find sticks on the ground sometimes, that's basically how you find them. They're just kind of lying around, just like this. And you could just get these sticks just from, you know, busting them up with your hands, just like the stones. All right, and look at this big sucker over here, man. Okay, so here's how we're going to do this. We're going to take our hatchet, or axe, and we're just going to chop on this bad boy until it gives us wood. Holy crap, that took a while. But man, yeah, these trees are where it's at, baby. These trees are where it's at. Oh, look at this one. All right, so I spent almost all night chopping on this tree and still haven't finished with it. But uh, I got I got the materials that I need to kind of get us started here with what we need. Aside from a little bit of a uh, reed supply, which is right around the corner, I think this is going to be... A great place to park to tell you the truth there's a lot of the stuff that I see I need here like clay um, the fire clay is a little bit different than what they call blue clay but I believe I can do the same thing with it and I have a lot of wood over here that I need to collect in just a second but before I do that I am going to place down a campfire and get something started so that we can actually start firing this clay and that's gonna be a fire pit now, it's relatively easy to get a uh, fire started here. What you want to do is grab your hatchet or your axe 
and right on top of wood, you want to go ahead and do this. You want to put the axe and the wood in the crafting grid and you get fire like that. Well, fire wood like that. So let's go ahead and grab a bunch of fire wood and now we have a bunch of fire wood. We can take this fire wood and we can actually stack it. So I made a shovel which was the same way that I've been doing everything. You know what? In fact, let me just place this bed right here. Now let's take the shovel and we're going to dig out a little hole. So this is pretty interesting. I don't know where this came from the first time, but uh, it's really, really cool how you can make charcoal right here, which is what we're going to need to get the temperature of, um, well, of everything pretty hot. You can cook uh, simple stuff with just regular firewood, I believe. But to get the temperature high enough to be able to smelt metals and alloys and stuff like that, you're going to need some of this. Okay, and that's all the firewood that we have except for right over here. And there's a wolf there, so I have to be really careful. If it sees me, I'm probably in trouble. Okay, we have a lot of wood. Good. Let's make a fire wood with this as well. I just gotta watch out for this wolf, man. Watch out for the wolf. Okay, boom. Lots of fire wood. I actually did a live stream yesterday and people were saying how much of this stuff you actually need. Okay, well, not yet, that's coming too. We're gonna need to cover it up with dirt in order to make our, um, our charcoal. Okay, so we've got a two by two hole full of it right here. What we're gonna do is take some dirt now and we're gonna cover it up. Uh, we need a little bit more. And we're actually going to need more than this because there can't be any air blocks, including the one over the fire. And it's going to take a good little while to get this done. All right, so now that that's all covered up, let's go ahead and take our dry grass. Let me just put this copper in here for now. I'm going to take our dry grass and shift click it down here. And then we're going to take our firewood. And we're going to put it on top. Now, you can only have 15 seconds once this starts to cover this up is what people tell me. So there's our fire. We're going to go ahead and cover that up now. And it's going to smolder just like this. Now, I'm just putting this on for peace of mind just because I want it all surrounded. And this is going to be where my fire's at. So it takes about a day to turn this into charcoal. But what's going to happen is all the firewood that I put down there is going to turn to charcoal and it's a much hotter fuel source. I can also make a fire outside of here. So let's take the grass now and we're going to start just a little fire right here. There we go. So the fire is burning. You can right click to interact with it. You can see the temperature going up on it. That's what's going on under there, by the way. So we're going to take the animal meat that we have and we're going to put that in. And we're also going to put some more firewood in here and just let this cook up. So the temperature of the fire is going to continue to get hot and the red meat is going to move over to a cooked meat, which we'll be able to use. And it goes on this nice little spit <laughs> to where it's cooking. You can't overcook it from what I know. And it's nice and daytime now. We can go explore in the area if we need to. But the first thing that we need to do is kind of set up a little bit of wall of defense. Now, as silly as this sounds, I'm going to have to go with dirt, you guys. I did a live stream yesterday and messed around with a wood build. And I got to tell you, it was ridiculous. It takes so long to do things with these rudimentary tools that... It just makes it okay to do things with dirt. So I'm going to clear out a little bit of this dirt and make a little fence around my settlement here. It never ceases to amaze me how much I go through tools in this game. Like, so fast, man. But I actually think we have enough to do our thing here. Now, we have two different types of soil, you'll see. Medium fertility soil and low fertility soil. There's actually a high fertility soil, too, although I've never seen it. But this can be used for farming. Uh, we're not going to do it now, but farming is going to come later when we have access to a 
copper tool like a hoe that we can use to uh, till the soil. Anyway, here we go. And our <laughs> wall is complete. So I can just block this off and it'll be good. Now, we can protect ourselves from any wolves or, or what have you, which is pretty cool. Now, I like to do something like this to where you can get in and out and stuff can't chase you. Just like this. It works out pretty good, right? Our food should be done now. We have our seven red meat that are cooked. And all we need now is a little bit of storage in here to really get us going. Uh, so what we're going to do is just go down to the local water hole. There's so many caves around here too. Look at this. Oh, all that juicy stuff to explore. Probably full of rich ore veins, which we can't mine right now, but we will soon enough. And it's starting to get dark once again, but I think that with all of the reeds that we've collected so far, we should be good to spend our first night at home getting some stuff prepared for higher end tools overnight. That's what I've seen is the best thing. Like you could plan to sleep throughout the nights and stuff, but for the most part, getting all of the stuff done during the day that requires you to have to go out kind of keeps you away from any hostile spawns and stuff except for the occasional wolves that still pop out during the day but it's relatively safe in comparison to the night when monsters start to come out and i'm sure you'll see that soon enough the last thing i want to do is go in here and we'll make our little storage set up just like i said we would we're going to go ahead and take all of our cattails here and just convert them to these reed baskets and I don't have enough to do a whole nother set but two should be plenty for now we'll go ahead and place those right here and you can access them independently and drag all of the inventory that you need in here until you're ready for it we're also going to take these berry bushes and uh, we're going to fill up some stuff in here we're actually going to set um we're actually going to go outside to do this and we're going to set a bunch of berry bushes in the way so that we can harvest them and to do that i guess that we're just going to go oh i don't guess you can stack these i thought you could stack them at first but now that i think about it i don't want them touching because that means that anything that comes to get me will be able to climb my wall up and get me. I'm going to go one away here. And yeah, I thought you could stack them, but maybe uh, all berry bushes you can't actually stack. Uh, let's go too wide here. So we could just go on top and harvest them. It'll be easy like this. And that worked out just about perfect, didn't it? <laughs> Pretty cool. Okay, so now we have uh, the ability to get renewable food that comes out, which we're going to need really, really soon without having to kill animals. But thankfully, I have already cooked some meat and stuff. So all of the meat that I cooked earlier is... Where is it? Did I grab it off of there? Maybe I didn't. Oh, here it is. I thought I got it out of there. <laughs> oh, well, it was still smoking. There we go. All of our food. And we still have three to go, too, which should uh, get us through the night very, very easily. And tomorrow, this should be done. And we'll start working with clay molds, most likely. But that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you all really enjoyed getting started in Vintage Story, guys. Thanks so much for watching. There's going to be more info in the description in the links below as well as my Twitch link if you want to watch me live Monday through Saturday at noon central. Thanks so much for watching guys. As always this is Ulgen signing off and we'll see you next time. Break it down.